Any art form that is easily understood will have a broad and popular appeal, although the fickle nature of popular acclaim has sometimes to be reckoned with. Near Dobwalls in the Cornish countryside, there lives a man whose energies have helped to keep alive a popular form of music for over 40 years. His name is Dudley Savage, and his brand of nostalgia can still be heard every Sunday morning on radio. The appeal that this music still holds for so many people seems to come from the fact that the concert organ crosses boundaries in taste. The music will equally stimulate the palate of the classic music lover, the pop fan, and that vast, undemonstrative group of people that prefer a good tune. <laughs> The Moving Picture Palace was to embrace the pipe organ, an instrument of antiquity, and during the late 1920s and early 30s made it its own. Dudley Savage was to prove one of its most competent performers. Almost as soon as he had mastered the instrument, he was invited to make radio broadcasts, which were to prove immensely popular. So popular were they that when it was suggested that the BBC were tiring of his broadcasts, there was a public uproar. The details have now been submerged in time, but such was his following that he was inundated with requests to tour the concert organs of Europe. By 1960, it seemed that the heyday of the concert organ was over. And it's due to Dudley and his skill with this massive instrument that this one survives to this day in the ABC cinema Well, I don't know whether it's the tune or the instrument, Dudley, but it's pretty nostalgic stuff, isn't Evocative it? Evocative stuff, isn't it? It's the 1930s, of course. The 1930s, yes. How did it all start? How did you get involved with the organ? Um, I had no option. My mother was a church... She was a farmer's daughter. That's why I love the country. Uh, she was a farmer's daughter, and she was the organist at the village church in a little village called Gulville, near Penzance, in Cornwall. And she was playing the organ four hours before I was born. So there we are. So the message got through, obviously. <laughs> indeed, yes. it did. <laughs> and did you start by playing the church organ? I played the church organ, yes, indeed. I started on the piano, then the church organ. I was a church organist, I think, about nine or ten or something like that. And um, Well, this must be pretty different from a church organ, isn't it? Not really. It has all the essentials, all the basic... Uh, excuse me, that's the piston on that, making it noise. Uh, look, this is basically a concert organ, a church organ, with all the extensions. Let me Let me play you part of a popular piece for the organ. Uh, it's the Wedding March of the 70s, in fact, the Toccata by Vidor. And you'll hear, I think, that it sounds exactly uh, as it would, would as played in a church. <laughs> It's a magnificent sound, but how does this instrument differ from the church organ? Well, the church organ has no effects, no kitchen sink, no traps, no percussion. Uh, we have a console here, like which is, I suppose, you could be likened to a telephone switchboard. Mm -hmm. I play here, operate all the switches, and the sound is produced in two organ chambers. Um, how does it differ from a church organ? Well, basically the same. We have the same stops, the diapase and the flutes and the strings uh, of a church organ, but a few little extras. Uh, let me show you. Here we have drums, cymbals. Listen to this. the 
drums, the percussion. We also have castanets and tambourines. How about this for a, a, a visit to Spain? Uh, what else can I give you? Yes, how about this? A lovely little musical clock, a musical box. seems to me you could tour the whole of the continent and produce evocative sounds. What about Holland? Well, Holland, yes, I was playing in Amsterdam the other day and at Hilversum on the concert organ at Avro Studios and in the Roman Catholic Cathedral, and from where one could hear the sound of, of the lovely Carillion, uh, many, of course, in Amsterdam. Of course, not far away from any church in Holland, any cathedral, any cinema, is the inevitable Dutch street organ that sounds something like this. do everything but dance on this. <laughs> yes. What have you got here? Three, three keyboards? Three, three manuals, we call them, yes. The accompaniment, the grace and the swell, and the pedal board. So one has to use two hands and two feet. And all this developed, what, from the silent film days? The, uh, the need to have an orchestra yes. for silent in, films? In the old days, in the, in the war, I say it's not 1900 odd, uh, 19, the turn of the century, just after the turn of the century, uh, when they first uh, had picture houses, uh, silent films, of course, were all the rage, and they would pay a pianist to accompany the silent films. Then things progressed, and from a, a piano, they went to a small orchestra, from a small orchestra to a big orchestra, and in America particularly, where it all started, um, they had not only the orchestra, but the organ as well. And then cost, cost uh, the economics of the thing came into it, and uh, the orchestras were dispensed with, mm -hmm and the one-man band was left, the organist. And so his job was to continue playing for the silent films. Then in 19, was it 28, the sound films came. Yes. But the organ stayed on. The organists weren't, dis weren't uh, sacked those days because uh, the organ became an integral part of the program, uh, featured between the films. Here, before the war, when I was the resident organist, you'd have the big picture, the second feature with Ronald Reagan, mostly here, incidentally, <laughs> and uh, the news, and Dudley. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, somebody must have had the idea. Who had the idea of, uh, of building this massive instrument for cinema? Well, uh, let's fly the flags for England, for Britain. It was an Englishman, in fact, uh, Hope Jones, who, lived, who was born in Cheshire. He started all this. What kind of things were you doing in, say, 1938, when you first came into this cinema? Well, I, I mentioned just now that, that I played at home in Cornwall in a church. I was at school there. And then um, the opportunity came for me to uh, tour England uh, as a boy organist. They call me the Cornish boy organist. Didn't they call you the wonder? That's debatable. Boy organist. Uh, but anyway, I toured <laughs> England. And then the company thought, well, now we're building this vast place. In those days, this was uh, it held, what, 2,400 2, people. And they thought it uh, right and proper that a Cornishman or a West Countryman should be sent as organist. So I came here as a boy organist in July 1938. And on August bank holiday that year, the organ was heard nationwide on the, the old national program, four o'clock to half past, which is now, of course, Radio 2. And it's been heard for the past, what, 37, 46, 39 years, off and on. What kind of things were you playing at that time? Um, you mentioned Deep Purple of the period. Yes, those are the tunes. Deep Purple, Love Walked In, 
and of course all the uh, light classics which remain popular even to this day. I get requests for all these still on, on the Sunday morning radio program. Uh, in those days, of course, many famous film stars would come around to promote their films. And I remember one day uh, the, 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 the actor uh, Charles Lawton, the great Charles Lawton, came to promote his film Mutiny on the Bounty. He just made Mutiny on the Bounty, and he was, of course, the world's top star. Well, the theatre was packed, thousands of people here, thousands of people out in the streets of Plymouth to see this man, just to catch a glimpse of him. I was introduced to him, and he said, look, young Savage, in his typical bounty way, I want you to play something very appropriate as I'm introduced on the stage here at Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Just sit at the organ, and when they say that Lawton is going to appear, just play something appropriate. Well, I had a, I don't know, a tongue-in-cheek that evening, I think, so I <laughs> sat at the organ as a young lad, and as the great Charles Lawton came onto the stage of the ABC Theatre, the old Royal Cinema, as it was in those days, I played this. <laughs> Charlie is my darling, and I got a look from Charles Lawton that I shall never forget to my dying day. I now know how Fletcher Christian felt on the bounty. <laughs> <laughs> I did indeed. Afterwards, he said it was all good fun, you know. Thank you very much. Dudley, you mentioned Love Walked In just now. Let's see if we can recreate something of the atmosphere of the 30s and what, early 40s. I mean, this cinema is a superb example of the design of the period. We'll, we can look at that. And I'd like to hear that song, that tune played. Written by George Gershwin and his brother, Ira. <laughs> 